That's okay. him. Okay. Clarence Savant, mm -hmm. the godfather of black entertainment, dies at 92. Now, you don't know who he is, do you? I've, I've heard of him. I've seen his face. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't really know who he was. There's a Netflix um, special special called The God Black Godfather mm -hmm. that if you should go see it if you want to know who he is. Okay. It's on now? It's streaming? Yeah, I think it's streaming now. I'm not sure. Okay. I think it is. But it says he dies at 92. Now, 92 is old. So he lived a full life mm -hmm. at 92. Yeah. That's good. But it says Clarence Savant, whose unofficial title is the Black Godfather, spanned the worlds of music, sports, and entertainment politics. He died on Sunday at his home in Los Angeles, according to a statement from his family. No cause of death was provided, but he was 92. I mean, at 92, really, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Heart attack, anything. True. It is with heavy heart that the Avant family announced the passing of Clarence Alexander Avant. The statement from his children, Nicole and Alexander, and son-in-law, um, Ted Sarandos. Through, though his, through his revolutionary business leadership, Clarence became affectionately known as the Black Godfather. In the world worlds of music, entertainment, and politics and sports, Clarence leaves behind a loving family and a sea of friends and associates that have changed the world and will continue to change the world for generations to come. The joy of his legacy eases the sorrow of our pain. Now, just looking up him, he pretty much had, was influential in a lot of uh, black celebrities mm -hmm. making it. Okay. So I was looking at this um, Netflix um, promo? promo. So let's look at that. Hopefully it'll show up, y'all. This name kept coming up. Who is this guy that I keep hearing about? He wasn't there, but he was right there. The record business, Hollywood, civil rights, anything that had to do with the rights of people. That told you everything you needed to know about him. He was fearless, man. Absolutely fearless. We needed to know him because he was the gatekeeper. He knew everyone. Everybody. Oh. The business he was in, he never wavered from his purpose. Seeing that things were fair. He said, would you like any help putting MCA into the black music business? I said, yeah. He says, well, that's good, because I'm going to tell you what to do anyway. I would hear about people that were in very serious situations when it came to life. And they would say, the only person that can help you with this is Clarence Avon. Clarence is the bridge from a time where there was no opportunity to a time where doors began to open. My brother. He understands the bigger that we are together, the bigger we will be as a culture. He told me, uh -huh. Henry Aaron would not be Henry Aaron if not for Clarence Avon. That I ought not to let you just walk on me. The message that I received from Clarence was just think about those kids that's looking up to me. If it feels it's good getting used, just keep on The person that's responsible for your transition, that's the key to changing your life. Until you use me up. He became that mentor for us all. He became that godfather. And to you, yeah. Remember the first time someone ever said, you're the godfather? Well, people call me that. People can call me anything. People have called me a son of a bitch, so what? <laughs> so I thought that that was I interesting. I saw a little bit of this. I'm going to go back and look at it again. Yeah, so, so I remember him now. Very influential. Yeah, very influential. In the black community. Um, apparently black music, mentoring, yes. helping people sign their contracts. Yes. Making sure people wasn't getting taken. He black was people wasn't getting taken very advantage good of. Very businessman. Very good negotiator. Um, understood the business. Mm -hmm. And most of us coming out, we don't, a lot of us don't know the inside. We're mm -hmm. not invited to those parties and mm -hmm. stuff. And so he didn't take no mess either. It looked he like was it. very straightforward. Yeah. Transparent. He didn't play yeah, because he was about business and he was about moving forward. So I'm going to watch it again. I do remember oh. him now. So it says Yvonne referenced his mentor, Louis Armstrong, hmm. and Barbara Streisand's manager, Joe Glaser, when asked about um, um, his ambitions. So his his mentors was Louis Armstrong and Barbara Streisand's That's manager, so wow. Joe Glaser. Okay. He said, Joe Glaser taught me it all goes back to something. Aim high. You can walk up the Empire State Building. You'll get tired. Your knees might give out, but you can ride the elevator back down. There you go. You always aim up here and walk down later. There you go. I like that. Mm -hmm. You can walk up there and you can take the elevator on the way down. On the way down. Don't worry about going down. 
concentrate on going, going up. Going up. There you go. So I thought that was very good. Okay. I so thought he lived a very, he, very he's, rich he's life. He's leaving a legacy. Yes. And that's good. It also, he also worked closely with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, helping them to connect with Janet Jackson. Mm-hmm. So it looked like he brokered a lot of deals. He mm-hmm. probably, people came to him. Mm-hmm. He would probably be the type of person that you would say, I, I have this movie and I'm a, a young writer, but c- can you look at this, Clarence? It's a good screenplay. You think you can get Denzel Washington? To, and he probably would be the one that would call Denzel Washington and say, oh, I looked at this. This looks good, man. You man, might want to. If, if, he if Clarence says he's good. Stamp of approval. Yeah. We'll move it forward. So a lot of people probably did stuff just on him saying it. If Clarence says it's good. Then I'll do it, and I'm sure. And he seemed like from the the last time the, the last time I saw his documentary or bits and pieces of it, he'll tell you if it's not good, go right. back and work on it. It says he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by Lionel Richie in 2021 and was awarded the Industry Icon Award at the Grammys. So he's a a, a music executive. That's probably why he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think he has kids too. Yeah, that was they said his kids released the well kids ninety. How much of a kid are you at nine? At you ninety? Your kids probably seven. I remember was talking to the kids in the documentary too. He he got grandkids. I'm sure Mm -hmm. his kids is probably seventies. His kids is mama's age. Well, a little younger than mama. So then he got great grandkids, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Great great grandkids. Mm-hmm. So salute to um, Clarence Avant. Mm-hmm. They call the Black Godfather. And if y'all get a chance, watch that on Netflix because that seemed like an interesting um, mm-hmm. documentary. Documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, Katilia. Oh, hey, she's here. Hi, ladies. Hi, Mama. And then oh. Scooby Doo says Wendy M and Patricia. She's saying hi, and she's saying hi to Katilia. And then. And Wendy said, Wendy M says, hi, all. Okay, ma. Well, not now. Okay. <laughs> My mother funny, ain't she? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Lil Dirk. Now, you know,